All right, let's go back to where we started. Images. They're, after all, the heart of computer vision. Um, computer vision takes in one, two, or more images and tries to reason about the world, um, tries to understand the world, tries to recognize things, tries to navigate the world. And what we have spent um, the last few lectures doing is trying to understand the image formation process so we can understand our input. And so we went from, well, there's an image of Hani standing in front of uh, a monument to really starting to understand things like how a camera figures out proper exposure. It balances shutter speed, it balances aperture, it balances sensitivity, ISO, to uh, satisfy the exposure equation so that the brightness of the scene leads to a well-exposed image. There are consequences. Big aperture, narrow depth of focus. Long shutter, motion blur. High sensitivity, noise. So there are consequences to just, it's not about just making pretty pictures, you have to decide what you want. Do you need everything in focus? Do you need a crisp image? Do you, can you tolerate motion blur? And we have to sort of make those determinations. We also understand the basics of image formation in terms of perspective projection, which by the way, artists have understood for hundreds of years, at least implicitly if they didn't have the equations, which is that as things move away from us, they get smaller and smaller, and we derived why that is. We have an algebraic and linear algebraic model for perspective projection that explains the types of things that you see in this image with the receding um, line. We know why things are out of focus now. There's a lens up front, there is an aperture. And so when light bends through that lens, it only is focused within a small uh, uh, radius for a fixed set of distances relative to the camera. The bigger the aperture, the narrower the depth of focus. But the more light we get, again, that same trade-off, but now we understand where it's coming from. Um, we also understand where that color fringing comes from. That's Snell's law. That has to do with the fact that light bends, again, understanding how light enters a lens and is focused, um, light bends proportional to wavelength. So the red, the green, and the blue part of the visible spectrum are being imaged differently across the three channels in a color image. Um, we know where the noise comes from. It has to do with sens sensitivity of the sensor, and it has to do with the imperfections of converting light from an analog signal into a digital signal, and again, Somewhat can be con con controlled by how bright the scene is and what the ISO is, and in some cases can't be controlled. And then where we just left off was JPEG compression. That when you take that image and take those raw pixels and write them off the camera, you have a choice. What is the file format? The standard format these days is JPEG compression. For better or worse, it is the standard, but it does lead to imperfections um, and particular things like blocking artifacts and blurriness and color aberrations. Now at this point, we've got a pretty good understanding of the image formation process, but we don't know what to do with those images yet. And that's to come. We'll have plenty of time in the semester to be talking about that. But at this point, I just want to say everything in this, in this class builds on the previous material. It's incredibly important that you understand all of these concepts. You should understand the perspective projection equation. You should understand that conversion from world to camera coordinates. Um, you should understand um, all the various aberrations, the, the trade-off between aperture size and shutter speed and ISO. You should understand how JPEG works and what those artifacts are. And if you haven't done it, I strongly, strongly encourage you to take the time to find the time to do some of those exercises. There is nothing, nothing in computer vision like getting your hands dirty and actually coding these things up to make sure that you understand both the big concepts, conceptually what are we doing, but also all of those details so that you can take these ideas and implement them and build actual computer vision systems as we will start doing for the rest of the semester.